In the last vlog, vlog number 30, I described the lobby in the Guardian building as being one of the most spectacular in the world. Well, in this vlog, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the Fisher building has the best lobby in the world with respect to a classical office building. All right, that's my opinion. You're viewing Detroit, America's Great Comeback City, vlog number 31 from Travels with Lobo. <laughs> In the early 20s, Detroit and the automobile industry were growing rapidly. Real estate was getting expensive in the downtown area. It was thus that William Durant, chairman of the General Motors Company, looked outside the downtown area to build a new headquarters. He settled on a location just west of Woodward Avenue along Grand Boulevard. This area would be called New Center not too far from downtown, up by Grand Boulevard and Woodward. Durand hired Albert Kahn, who would later be known as Detroit's architect, to design his building and ground was broken in 1919, and the building was eventually finished in 1922, and it was called the General Motors Building. It retained that name until General Motors moved its world headquarters to the Detroit waterfront at the GM Renaissance Center. The building since then houses the offices of the state of Michigan and is now called Cadillac Place. A name closely associated with General Motors is Fisher Body. Now, the Fisher brothers were an amazing group of six brothers who, in one way or other, were involved with Fisher Body. All the chassis for the GM cars were built by Fisher Body, and they were eventually a subsidiary of General Motors. But the corporation itself was incorporated in 1919 and at that time had a capacity of 370,000 car bodies. And here I'm driving by long abandoned Fisher Body Plant Number 21, a favorite target of urban explorers in Detroit. So I couldn't just pass by. Seeing this open door, I just had to go in and do some urban exploring myself. And as you can see, the place has been stripped of anything of value, any copper tubing, electrical wiring, whatever of value is gone. And the graffiti from gangs is all over the place. So why not go head down this way and explore? Well, it's probably not the safest activity considering their car bodies were sold to many car manufacturers. Remember in 1919, there were numerous. It wasn't just the big three. And by the way, they were the first to manufacture a car body that was enclosed and thereby weatherproof. In 1919, they sold a 60% share of Fisher Body to General Motors. Part of the proceeds were intended to finance the magnificent plans that they had across the street on Grand Boulevard, across the street from General Motors, that is. What better way to upstage General Motors than to build a magnificent building just across the street known as the Fisher Building? And why not go all the way and hire Albert Kahn as the architect? <laughs>
Fisher building was to have been only the first step in the grandiose plans that the Fisher brothers had for the new center area, but a stop was put to those grandiose plans by the Depression of 1929 to 1938. I would be remiss in not mentioning that in the golden tower of the Fisher building is the broadcast booth of radio station WJR Detroit that has been here since 1928. If you want to know about Detroit, tune in to WJR. So join me next Friday as I take a closer look at Detroit's architect, Albert Kahn. What a story. Thank you for viewing this video to the end and see you next Friday. All the best from Lobo.